It's interesting to think about what school needs to be when this is the very this is the scale of variation in people. I, is it appropriate to think of it as a place, particularly when they're young, small? Sometimes school people think of it as a place for uh, teaching self-preservation and, and, and sort of imparting things to the child, which isn't 100% incorrect, but how correct is it when you have this different, very different ways that children can come into the situation with those sensibilities? In terms of free-range schools where, where students are, are encouraged to learn uh, and work things out for themselves, in the, the sort of current climate in society now, children are cared for and protected a lot more and driven around and, and okay. have things done for them. Parents are like, a, they're like little assistants, you know, <laughs> that do everything for them, make sure everything happens. And I think that that can be actually in the long term as adults, that what, what's going to happen when they haven't got someone doing that for them? And right. I think you can this sort of sense of entitlement um, can really be, I think it could really be a bit of a problem. There's a certain conception of what children need that that presumes. As a scientist who studies those things, they're wrong because it de-emphasizes their ability to make decisions and, and be empowered to operate in a certain way in the world, whereas what that does is it takes away some of the autonomy. It may yeah. emphasize relatedness in a certain way, although it's not consistently the kind of relatedness that may be most beneficial, because it's independent of whether the child wants it or not, there's a tie to the parents that may, may not be as beneficial to the child as the parent thinks it is, just because they're constantly with them to get them to different things and, and, and managing mm. their life in a certain way. Is it really the form of relatedness that really enables the child to feel like they're growing in their in their social situations and things like that. If mm. they're not choosing the situation they're put into, is that really the like the best reason for them to be in that situation? They might not even realize that they're only doing it to police them or that they're doing it because they think that's what they, you know, that's expected of them, for example, expectations. There's some pretty interesting assumptions that most parents have not even thought about that go into why they're doing things the way they're doing it. It's sort of like you say, it's, it's, it's a social pattern, which means not every parent is making a fully cognizant choice about what it is because they haven't necessarily considered what the alternatives would be. There's a generational sort of where there's a reaction mm -hmm. against being abandoned to something and mm -hmm. then, there's, then yeah. there's sort of some fears about what, what it means to be in a this, what is the situation of childhood today? Is it truly dangerous? Well, no, that, that's objectively not true, mm. but that's still the parents' perceptions aren't driven by reality. They're driven by media perceptions. And, and you know, there, mm. there's, there's some challenges in the whole thing. My way of looking at it is, is education has to come down to a relationship to reality. Now, we all have some distance from reality just because human beings are inherently wired to not directly deal We fill in the gaps reality. ourselves. Yeah. 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 We, we fill in the gaps yeah. ourselves and that is not that no one has a, is in touch with reality. It's not possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've figured that out. Mm -hmm. And so the question is not delusional or not delusional. The question is how delusional? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To what degree? And mm. that's where our media landscape can be very challenging mm. because it can spin itself off into unrealities without mm. the people doing it and the people consuming it realizing that's what's happening. This is the Agentic Schools podcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.